Good evening, uh, everybody, and welcome to a brand new day of our journey from Buenos Aires to Santiago de Chile. Today, we spend the entire day at sea, having a great lunch on board, a glass or maybe two of champagne uh, in uh, my favorite lounge of Norwegian Star. We'll visit an art-ish gallery on board and of course the highlight of the day sailing around Cape Horn. This is 14 days at the end of the world. Episode 7, is this the end of the world? A friend of mine always uh, book cruises with the maximum possible number of uh, sea days. Uh, in a way, I understand that, taking the account that a sea day is the only time when you can enjoy 150% what the ship has on offer. And believe me, Norwegian Star, uh, our ship, uh, has a lot of things that can fill up your diary for a sea day. Not uh, necessary excellent things, but at the end of the day, uh, when you are in the middle of nowhere, you cannot be very picky. This time for me, uh, sea day uh, will always start with a mandatory Bloody Mary in the sky bar. And after that, I love to walk around the ship, uh, stop time to time for a cocktail and some people watching, why not, meeting my new friends for more cocktails. <laughs> uh, maybe in the afternoon I will find some time for a beauty sleep on my cabin's balcony. I do love a sea day with all the beautiful views uh, and the food, uh, the non-stop music, the game activities by the pool and the food, uh, the duty-free shopping opportunities, the chat with your new friends and the food, mainly the food. I don't remember uh, if I told you how important it is on a sea day the food. Just joking. But it is very, very important. Now, on a serious note, uh, on Norwegian Star, you have plenty of options for lunch. Freshly prepared noodles and delicious wok fried dishes in Ginza, uh, the Asian uh, restaurant. All time favorite comfort foods such as shepherd pie or fish and chips in Oshinan Bar and Grill. Uh, indoor buffet restaurant, uh, the Garden Cafe. Uh, Top Ciders Bar and Grill with its delicious grill burgers and hot dogs or a classic lunch with traditional cuisine and stunning ocean views in Versailles, the main dining room. But if you travel in a suite, your lunch option must be without any thinking uh, into Cagnes, with a healthy and not so healthy but delicious uh, a la carte option. This is the place where I want to invite you for lunch today.
I was never a big fan of those spaces on cruise ships called, I would say, quite pretentious art galleries. Uh, with few exceptions, they are always cluttered with items that will never sell on shore, called, once again, pretentious art. Now, big question, is taste in art subjective? Mm. Many scholars will tell you that taste is an idea that is objective. Only your possession of it is subjective. I do believe that the degree of subjectivity of one's taste is correlated to the magnitude of comparative experience. Maybe, maybe, the continuous movement of the ship, the strong uh, salty air affects one's taste and makes those artworks desirable. Or, Maybe the free glass of champagne offered at all auction on board is the magnet attracting art lover cruisers. Who knows? But let's have some fun, agree to disagree about the art gallery on board Norwegian Star and listen to my personal art curator. Come on, people, smile, don't take me serious. We are in holiday at the end of the day. We are not in Louvre or MoMA. So here we are in the glamorous Norwegian Cruise Line Art Gallery. Art is of course of cultural significance to any cruiser and I'd like to curate for you a few because items. You, because you are a specialist, I would I'm like a specialist, your yes. recommendation in art on board Norwegian Star. Okay. First I'd like to start with sad horses. So these are three sad horses. Clearly, life has been very hard to them. Why they are sad? They're sad because they what they did. They went to the university. They thought they'd get a good job, and they ended up working at co-op in Sturry. Okay. So these three horses you can see on the tills on a Saturday. They do got like one day a week. But some. These are, the, oh, sorry, sorry. The, the, these are called horses distressed because they're thinking. Why did I get a loan from the government to go to university? I could have just gone to college and worked at co-op that way. But this is a very interesting... The, 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 the light reflects on their depressed horseness. Ness, 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 ness. All right, but sometimes horses can be excited. That's why I'd like to recommend to you this second piece. This is excited slutty horses. So these are three horses from Sturry. Clearly bored as well, but they're saying we're not going to be bored, we're going to be like really slutty. We're going to be a bit like Lizzie and Laura. So we have here, this is Lizzie horse, this is Laura horse, and, and, Hillary. This, is, and this is Leo horse. Oh, okay. Leo's got like the craziest hair because he doesn't look after his hair enough. So these we have like slutty horses who are depressed and just depressed horses. This is like Elaine, Hillary and somebody, some lesbian. I don't know. Let's but, do them but I think you made a mistake because this horse, it's not me. I have a special painting, which is this one. That's me, the one in the middle. This is called Fat Walrus's painting. And this depicts very badly drawn marine animals. Um, and this one is like depressed turtle. No, that's Leo and Miguel going to ask No, this is called Depressed Turtle because he's standing on the other turtle and he's so badly drawn, I'd be depressed if I was a turtle and I looked like this. So I think of the art, the art you can see, I would focus on these two. It's like a kind of diptych. It's not a quite a triptych, there's only two. It's a diptych of depressed horses and slutty horses. And maybe we can persuade the artist to do crazy horses. And you could indeed buy three pieces of art. And if you buy the art, you can also get a free glass of warm, dried wine. Um, called champagne. Called champagne, just in the soda stream. But I, uh, I have a question. How much you recommend me as an art lover to pay for the sad and for the excited horses? The slutty horses. The slutty horses, sorry. Slutty. Don't paraphrase me. I know to my students are paraphrase everything I say. Don't paraphrase okay. these, please. Can you answer it's, my question? It's depressed and slutty horses. I would say you need to pay at least $22,000. Fuck me, that's too much. Or you can ask Lizzie to do it yourself with a bit of her art. 
and she'll do it for about 20p. Thank you very much for curating uh, this pleasure, evening for pleasure, us. Thank you. On a cruise ship with so many bars and lounges to discover, finding your favorite may take a um, couple of days. Uh, whenever you are looking to meet uh, up with friends or make new ones, there is always an opportunity to mix it up on board Norwegian Star. Now, my favorite lounge for a pre-dinner cocktail was Gatsby Champagne Bar with uh, its premium selection of champagne and vodka, uh, caviar, pate and foie gras. I love the cool sophistication and the charm of this establishment with the service too much. Now, what I didn't really like was that Gatsby Champagne Bar uh, was the perfect proof of how much NCL freestyle cruising got lost in translation. I do like the idea of a relaxed atmosphere without a strict dress code like the Cunard ones, uh, which brings uh, an invasion of cheap tuxedos, jackets on the back of the chair and AliExpress uh, design evening gowns. At the end of the day, for me, style is a way to say who you are without having to speak. Fashion is what you are offered four times a year by designers. Style, it's what you choose. For me, NCL freestyle cruising means being relaxed without forgetting to respect my fellow passengers, the venue or the crew, correct? Unfortunately, on Norwegian Star in general and in Gatsby Champagne Bar before dinner in particular, uh, freestyle men wearing uh, baseball caps, uh, shorts, and t-shirts proudly bearing the sticker from the previous day <laughs> excursion. I do understand traveling light, but I didn't know that freestyle includes a shower every other day. <clears throat> Enough with my fashionista moaning. Let's have a glass uh, with Moe Chandon in Gatsby Champagne Bar. of the day was indeed the moment when Norwegian star reached Cape Horn. Few, if any, routes in the history of navigation have been so famous, so attractive, or have claimed so many lives and ships as the passage around Cape Horn. Located on the southernmost point of South America, the Cape was previously part of the Clipper routes uh, that transported much of the world's trade, marking a link between the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. Today, uh, Cape Horn and the Magellan region are home to a wild ocean ecosystem. And you can find, for example, here the world's southernmost kelp forest. Cape Horn was discovered on 29th of January 1616 by the Dutch sailors. Here, the Atlantic, Pacific and the Southern Ocean collide, making uh, space for the legendary stormy condition that includes the screaming 60s, gale force wind and waves that have been known to reach as high as 10 story buildings. More than 10,000 sailors and over 800 ships disappeared here. But we are lucky because the weather was great. Traditionally, sailors who successfully rounded the horn will celebrate this moment by smoking cigars and pouring alcohol into the ocean to thank Neptune, the Roman god of the sea, for their safe passage. 
As the tradition, it was about pouring alcohol. I celebrate the moment with a large cocktail in the sky bar while the captain decided to sail around a Hornos Island for excellent views of the Chilean Navy station there, a residence, a utility building, a chapel and a lighthouse, and the memorial uh, dedicated to the sailors who died while attempting to round the horn, a sculpture featuring the silhouette of an albatross. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cape Horn. Behind me, it's uh, Cape Horn. This is the point where the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean are meeting uh, the waters of the Arctic Ocean. And uh, this is the highlight of uh, our trip, at least from the geographical point of view. Behind me, Cape Horn. That's all for today. In the next episode, we'll sail together the Beagle Channel, we'll discover Ushuaia, take a ride with the famous train at the end of the world, discovering Tierra del Fuego National Park, and unveil the strange history of a Romanian who has a bad name here. See you tomorrow at 6 p.m. Central European time on YouTube channel Leonard Myron 1969. And don't forget that yesterday is but today's memory and tomorrow is today's dream. Thank you for watching and good night. <laughs>